Well, this is a fine place you have here, Dr. Nichols. Thank you. And I must say, Professor, your knowledge of engineering is most impressive. Yes, back home we call him the miracle worker. Indeed. <laughs> uh, may I offer you something, gentlemen? Dr. Nichols, I might be able to offer something to you. Yes? I notice you're still working with polymers. Still? What, what else would I be working with? Aye, uh, what else indeed? I'll put it another way. How thick would a piece of your plexiglass need to be at 60 feet by 10 feet to withstand the pressure of 18,000 cubic feet of water? Oh, that's easy. Six inches. We carry stuff that big in stock. I have noticed. Now, suppose, just suppose, I were to show you a way to manufacture a wall that would do the same job, but be only one inch thick. <laughs> would that be worth something to you, eh? <laughs> You're joking. Perhaps a professor could use your computer. Please. Computer? Computer? Ah. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard? How quaint. Transparent aluminum? That's the ticket, laddie. Oh, well, it'd take years just to figure out the dynamics of this matrix. <laughs> yes, but you would be rich beyond the dreams of avarice. It was stationary, this thing, and it was bright silver in color. And it had a dome. A dome, whatever it was, was tilted so that I could see them and they could see me. Were you looking at them through windows, through portholes? Um, no, not portholes. It was just sort of the... like a cockpit, I suppose, that had this perspective or glass or whatever it was. They could see me anyway and I could see them. These people were beautiful people. That's the only way I can des describe them. Um, they had long golden hair, like a page boy, page boy bob, just like the old kings. You used to see photographs of the old kings. And the, the color of the hair was golden. Now, I was really... What I, were they dressed in? They, they had a sort of a pole neck jumper affair, like a ski top suit, mm. in, in pale blue. In, in pale blue.